to sign a prenup or not to sign a prenup? That is the question. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Keandra Jackson, licensed marriage and family therapist here. If it's your first time, hey, thanks for joining me. If you are a returning subscriber, I appreciate you so much for being here. So listen, I need for you to put in the comments, would you ever sign a prenup? Yes or no? And also tell me why. This whole conversation came about because there was a new episode that just dropped on the Dear Future Wifey podcast with Latera. Paris Whitfield and A.D. Dolphin. Now look, this is a multi-millionaire man who owns The Herbs, and I believe it is like one of the largest black-owned herbal companies. He talked about how he didn't get married because his fiance didn't want to sign a prenup. And so let me tell you, I didn't think this was a big deal, but when I started reading the comments and then some Facebook groups that I was in, everybody was talking about it. I was like, okay, look, let me do a video on this because it is getting juicy. I watched the full episode so, and I'm not here to talk about AD because he was interesting. Some of y'all loved him. Some of y'all didn't. He was very straightforward, honest, and to the point, which I don't think a lot of y'all are used to men being that straightforward. But a lot of the things he said, I kind of agree with. But some of them I was like, hold on, now you went too far. You went with a little bit too far. The energy, the attitude, the spirit behind some of the things, I was like, yeah, no, you need to... <laughs> You need to, uh. Anyways, I'm not here to talk about him, even though this conversation is stemming from that podcast that I'll probably link here in the description so y'all can check it out if you want to. So this was a huge deal because this is a black man, right, who owns a company that is valued at over $80 million, right? So prenups and all of that can't, has to come into the conversation, essentially. And so for the people who don't know what a prenup is, prenup actually stands for prenuptial agreement. This is a legal binding document that you and your future spouse to be, because this is something you sign before you get married. That's why it's pre, before, that's a prefix. Anywho, so this is something that you and your partner sign before you actually say I do. It's a legal binding document that tells you and your partner that if something goes wrong, if y'all get a divorce, if y'all break out, this is how we're gonna navigate our finances, our assets, our debts, or anything else that we have going on. I think the hardest thing that people really don't understand about a prenup is that when people think about signing a prenup, people automatically assume like, well, if I sign it and if we get divorced, then I mean, I just get nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm walking away with zero things. And that's not what a prenup is. If you marry a person, a woman or a man, who is true, who is honest, who is a person of integrity, they're not gonna have you walk out of the marriage with nothing, especially if y'all built some things together. So you get to determine, you and your partner get to determine the terms and agreements within the contract. I even heard that Beyonce and Jay-Z had a prenup and Beyonce said, baby, if this don't work out and I have a certain amount of kids, the price goes up and it's stuck or whatever Cardi says. So you get to figure out the terms and the agreement of your prenup. Your prenup looks very different than other people. So don't think that just because you sign something, that means if you get a divorce, you get nothing because that's not true. And if you get nothing, that means you signed a contract that said you would get nothing, which is a horrible deal. So make sure you have a very good attorney review all of your prenups if you plan to sign one. As a random side note, there's another thing that people don't talk about as often, but there's something else called a postnup, which is a postnuptial agreement. This is something you sign post, prefix meaning after you get married. So you essentially get married, didn't sign a prenup, but now you're in this relationship, you're building wealth, you're having assets, there's major financial shift or all of those things happening. And you're like, look, we need to put some things in place. Then you sign what people would call a post nuptial agreement. We don't talk about that enough, but that's something that's very common. And that's something that you can do also. If you get into a relationship, you didn't sign a prenup, y'all may not have had any assets, but then you start to accumulate wealth, you can sign a post nup later. I'm gonna give y'all my personal opinion of this too, like my own personal opinion regarding prenups and post nups. Let's talk about why people would or would not get those things to begin with. I absolutely firmly feel like, especially if we're talking about black people and black families, I think historically 
we have not had as much wealth as our white counterparts, right? And so if we look back over the years, you know, millionaires and billionaires, that wasn't something that was literally kind of like a common thing. There were some, right, that we could name, but I think now we're coming into this wealth, we're coming into this knowledge, and we need to understand what to do with the assets that we attain. And because historically we haven't had the wealth, we haven't even had to think about how to protect those things through LLCs and businesses and trusts and prenups and post nuts and all post nuts, post nups, <laughs> post nups with a P. We haven't had to think about those things because we just didn't have to think about those things, right? And so if you are a person who is growing, who's evolving, who wants more for yourself, then this is conversation and things that you need to think about and be having. If you're one of those people who ain't never had nothing and will never have nothing and don't plan to have nothing, no shade, because we all know people who just wanna stay where they're at and they don't have the growth mindset, then these post nuts and pre nuts <laughs> conversations are not for you because you don't have anything to protect. One of the things that actually annoyed my soul from the AD guy from the Dear White Free podcast is he said that if you are making $150,000 a year or less, like this isn't a, even a conversation that you need to be having. And I disagree because if you're making $150,000 a year, but you are literally managing your money appropriately, you're absolutely going to have some assets. He made it seem like if you make $150,000 a year, that ain't that much money because he's a multimillionaire and you probably don't have anything. But no, I know tons of people who make six figures, who own homes, who own cars, who have pieces of land, and those are things to protect. So if you're making $150,000, but you're spending $149,000 of it, then you probably ain't got nothing extra <laughs> to be able to protect. But if you are making 150 K, but you are living a lifestyle that is more frugal, say for instance, you're only spending $50,000 for this example, you have a hundred thousand dollars of wiggle room to develop, to spend on land and property and cars and assets and crypto and whatever else you want to invest in. You have some wiggle room. So it depends on how you're managing your money and it's not necessarily based on the number, it's based off of what you're doing with that money. Now, the whole goal of protecting your assets, especially if we're talking about divorce here, is because the divorce rate is significantly increasing oftentimes, right? Like we have a pretty high divorce rate here in the United States. And so people want to know that if I go into this marriage, if I go into this relationship, if I go into this with you, I don't want to walk out of here with zero dollars, right? I don't want to walk out of here having to split everything I have worked my behind off to give to you. Who trying to do that? <laughs> Who is trying to do that? So if you come from money, like if you're a Hilton and you know you got wealth passed down from generation to generation, I feel like those, that's something you wanna protect too as far as assets, but it's different when you have been working your behind off, when you had to you know, get it out the mud and you were going hard in the paint and you grew up you know, in poverty or you know, less favorable situations and circumstances and you haven't reached the level of success, you don't wanna easily give that away to somebody who hasn't been on that journey with you. And this is why my personal opinion about prenups is that for me and mine, I'm absolutely signing a prenup. Baby, don't date me. <laughs> if you do not want to sign a prenup, we are not getting married until we sign a prenup because not only do I have assets that I wanna protect, I have businesses that I have built, I have been grinding my behind off to get to the level of success that I am at currently. And this is still just the beginning, right? Like it's up and stuck again, you know, from here forward. But I hope that I'm going to marry and be in partnership with someone who also has assets and who will continue to have assets and he wants to protect those assets. If I'm marrying somebody and he's just whatever <laughs> about the things that he has built and the money that he has and he doesn't want to protect that, that's a red flag, okay? Red flag. I'm always going to come into the relationship no matter how well, much of a woman of faith I am, how much I am going to believe that God has instructed me to marry this person. I am absolutely going to be realistic, right? Sometimes we get so woo-wooed and we're so in love and oh my God, we're never going to get a divorce. Stop living in la-la land, okay? I think it's probably because I've worked with more than enough couples <laughs> married 
or not, divorced or not. And I have seen so many people, especially even my parents growing up and getting divorced when I was around 10. So I've seen what divorce can do to families when you ain't got no money. But I can't even imagine what it does to families that actually do have assets and money. I remember there was some um, episode, I don't know if it was Love and Hip Hop or one of those Atlanta shows where Candy Burris and her husband, right before they were about to get married, that was a whole big deal. She wanted to sign a prenup and he was dragging his feet about signing it and they didn't know that they was gonna make it to the altar or not. Like this is a huge thing when you really have things that you want to protect. And that's the name of the game. So being able to sit down while you're still in love <laughs> and liking the person and say, hey babe, I don't see us ever parting, but just in case something goes down, just in case something happens and things don't turn out favorable, these are the terms that I'm agreeing to. If something happens, this is what I want. If something happens to you or you lose your mind or you know something, this is what happens. What if one of us dies? All This needs to be spelled out. If I have children or multiple children, this is what our children is gonna get. This is what I'm gonna get so you can be able to help me maintain my lifestyle. These are all things to think about. And again, some of this might be foreign to y'all because you're like, well, you should just go into a marriage and a relationship with love and that sustains everything and it shouldn't matter. You probably ain't never had a dime in your life <laughs> because when you have things that are valuable, you wanna protect those things. And that is by any means necessary. So if we got to create a legal binding document that's going to say, hey, 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 I love you. I want to be with you forever. But just in case you start to cut the fool or I start to cut the fool, we need to figure out what this is going to look like as far as separation and divorce goes. And I think these are real conversations that we need to have because we can't walk around life thinking that finances isn't one of the top reasons why couples get divorced. <laughs> like I've said this so many times, like finances is one or money is one of the top relationship killers, period. And so thinking about it from that aspect, and if that's the number one reason why a lot of marriages fail and don't work out, then that's the area that we need to try to stay on top of the most. To be honest with you, if you get with someone while you're already successful and on this level it's a little tricky sometimes to figure out if this person is really with you because they love you and they want to be with you and you're their person or are they with you because of the lifestyle and the stuff and the financial and the material things that they can get while being with you it's very hard to discern and determine that and this is where faith comes in I mean this is not gonna be a faith video but you need to be asking God is this the person you're supposed to marry and getting very clear instructions on that because if you're not, then you are going to potentially ruin all of the amazing things that God has entrusted to you. But this conversation looks different when you have, you know, started from the bottom with your partner and say, for instance, y'all been together for a long time and y'all both didn't have nothing, but y'all grew an empire together and now you're finally at this level. I think not having a prenup in those situations will probably be a little bit more likely and favorable and I'll be more willing to agree with that than someone just coming in when I'm already a billionaire <laughs> and then trying to get $500 million from me if our marriage doesn't work. Absolutely, positively not. So look, it's completely up to you. This might be a conversation that isn't for everybody. I just wanted to thank you for sticking around and watching another video on my channel. Make sure to stay around and like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.